Hello, everyone. My name is Rongo Guo. I'm a research fellow working on the intelligent transportation systems. Today, I'm so excited to share with you the on-demand transit system and how this system can enhance our daily life with innovative technologies in the future. So first of all, let's picture the future where the public transport can be transformed to be more efficient, more sustainable, and eco-friendly. So what could this future look like? There are some possibilities. So first, please picture the massive vehicles. They are designed to bring the more passengers at once, which can reduce their travel time. And next, picture the opposite, the mini vehicles. These vehicles can provide the personalized trip and can change the route in real time according to the passenger's demand. And the third possibility is that the vehicles, they can travel on their dedicated lanes, and they won't be bothered by the other vehicles on the road. Lastly, please envision the future where the mini vehicles, or we call them modular vehicles, they can separate or they combine together on the go according to the passenger's demand so they can change the capacity in real time. Each of these vision provide the future of the tr public transport that they can shape the way we travel in our cities. But before we dive into these possibilities, let's take a step back and look at the current public transport. The most familiar public transport service uh, is the conventional bus systems. This system uses the traditional or the or, or the historical travel data to generate the fixed stations, routes, uh, timetable, and the schedules. So for us passengers, if we want to get to our destination, we need to rely on this fixed route. And sometimes maybe we need to uh, transfer from one bus to another to reach our destination. So this system has its own drawbacks. The one issue is that uh, the mismatch between the vehicle supply and the passenger demand, especially during the peak hours, like the morning peak and the evening peak, because at that time we have so many commuters and the students who want to use the public transportation. And the next issue is a bus delay caused by the traffic congestion. And both issues will cause the longer waiting time at a station. Maybe you have already experienced it in your daily life and it will affect the travel experience of the passengers and also reduce the traction of this service. And the passengers, they may want to shift from the public transportation to other travel mode, like uh, private cars or the taxis, even Uber. So uh, these issues highlight the need for a new or more adaptive and responsive service that is the on-demand transit. The on-demand transit is a demand responsive service uh, that tailored to meet the passenger's demand in real time. So through the user-friendly app, passengers can submit their origins and destination and their preferred pickup time to the system. And then the system will dynamically generate the route and send back the route to the passengers for booking. If passengers, they are satisfied with the service, they can decide to book the seat for themselves. So different from the conventional bus, the on-demand transit provides the highly flexibility in routing and the scheduling. It means we can change the route and the schedules in real time, depending on the uh, temporary and special travel requirements submitted by the passengers. And the service provide to each passenger we need to make sure the service is door to door and there are no transfer for passengers uh, for the, of the trip. Besides, the current on-demand transit system, they can range different vehicles at the same time, like the uh, mini bus, medium bus, or more larger bus. So we can change capacity based on the demand. So it's uh, another way to reduce the passenger's waiting time. And currently, the on-demand transit includes the commuting bus, school bus, feeder bus, and the microtransit. So how the system generates the service for each passenger? 
Here we give a generalized planning process. The process starts with the data collection. So after the passengers submit to the request, the system needs to check whether this request can be matched with any route in the current network. It means we need to check whether the route contains the origin and destination submitted by the passengers. And also we need to make sure the waiting time at the origin can satisfy the pickup time the passengers submitted. If they can be matched with any route in the current network, then this passenger is assigned to the route. Otherwise, this request will put into the request pool, and the system will then generate a new route according to this demand. Finally, uh, the route will send back to the passengers, no matter it's uh, already an uh, existing route or it's a new route, and the passenger will decide whether to book or not. So according to this process, we can see the potential benefits of the on-demand transit service. For passengers like us, it's all about the convenience. We can get a more personalized trip with less waiting around, and we can get a time-saving service to reach our destination. And for the operator who runs the system, it's about to be smart with resources by optimizing the rules and the schedules because it's a way to cut down on cost, and they can deliver a service that really responds to what passengers need. And for the local authorities, the on-demand transit is a good way to achieve the shared mobility, and also it's helpful to reduce emission and uh, uh, the fuel consumption. Uh, so according to these benefits, I will introduce some uh, on-demand transit available in the UK. So in the UK, the on-demand transit is not just a, a concept, it's a reality. So here are some available services that you can book uh, by phone or by online, like the GoTo, uh, What's the Midland on-demand bus. These services are designed for specific areas. Most of them focus on the rural areas. So it can deal with the coverage issues of the conventional bus in the less populated regions. But for now, uh, the on-demand transit surveys still face the following challenges. The first one is the operational efficiency. Because the restriction of the crew schedule, like the driver working time and the cost related, we cannot make sure the service generated, like the rules and the schedules, they are always the most efficient solution. So it will lead to the scenario where the vehicles, they are underused. So maybe they are half empty, and we can't use the full capacity to serve passengers. Besides, the current on-demand transit system, they, can, they cannot predict the accurate uh, incoming demand so it's very difficult to achieve the proactive vehicle allocation. The operational efficiency can not only affect the service quality, but also will cause the environment issues. For example, the efficient routing and the scheduling uh, will lead to the increase in the emission and fuel consumption. And if passengers, they find the service, they are uh, unreliable or it's inconvenient because of these efficiencies, there are the possibility that they will shift from the on-demand service to the private cars, which will cause more environmental issues in our daily life. So in order to deal with uh, these challenges, today we introduce two innovative technologies. The first one is autonomous vehicle, that is AV. AV means that the vehicle can censor its uh, environment to navigate and operate without human intervention. So this uh, feature is quite helpful to improve the on-demand transit service by several ways. The first way, by incorporating the AV technologies, we can avoid the limitations that are imposed by the human factors, such as the uh, crew schedule, the driver working time, and the driver's salary, like that. And uh, this shift can not only improve the system efficiency, but also can avoid the risk of accidents that may be caused by the human driving behaviors. 
The AV technology ensures that the vehicles can be dispatched automatically, and this feature can be extended to the vehicle, automatic vehicle relocation to make sure they have the optimal match between the uh, vehicle supply and the passenger demand across the different areas. For instance, if we find the vehicles in one area they are sufficient and they are underused because of they have the low demand in that area, then these vehicles will be dispatched automatically to other areas where the demands are higher. So this dynamic allocation system can help to maximize the vehicle usage and make sure the resources, they are used for the area where they need it the most. So building on the advancement of the AV technology, here we introduce another innovative technology that is connected vehicle, that is CV. CV means vehicle has the ability to communicate with its surrounding. For example, it can communicate with other vehicles. We define it as the V2V and communicate with infrastructure. We define it as E2I. And also, it has the ability to communicate with the human devices and the roadside unit. This interconnection um, brings the benefits to deeply change the public transportation. First of all, through the V2V and the V2I communication, the vehicles can share the critical information about their environment like locations, speed, traffic condition, and the operational state. And this uh, real-time data exchange is quite helpful to improve the safety, allowing vehicles to forecast and react to the potential risks before they become a threat. Uh, next, the CV technology also plays an important role to reduce the traffic congestion. By enabling vehicles to communicate with the infrastructure, for example, communicate with the traffic lights, the vehicles that the CV equips the vehicles, they can change their speed in real time to make sure it can be matched with the green time sequence. It's a good way to reduce unnecessary stop and smooth the traffic flow when they approach the junctions. So, from this example, we can see the possibility to reduce the traffic congestion with the communication between vehicles and the infrastructure. And lastly, uh, the ability that vehicles communicate with the traffic management system or traffic management center can achieve a high level of coordination. It means that the on-demand transit service can be more dynamically optimize the routes and the schedules responding to the change in demand and the traffic condition. So we can find the possibility with this high level coordination to improve our service quality and maximize the vehicle usage. So here we give the example where CV and AV technology work together in an on-demand transit system. After passenger they submit the travel request, uh, this travel data will be shared with the vehicle fleet through the CV technology. And three vehicles are automatically dispatched for serving. By using the AV technology, these vehicles first visit the first uh, origin and the first, uh, second origin to pick up the passengers before they approach into the first destination. After they reach the first destination, the one vehicle is informed to continue the delivery task to transport the passengers of the group two to the destination two, while the other two vehicles uh, with the real-time communication and the smart routing enabled by CV and AV technologies are automatically dispatched to other areas where demands are increasing. This example shows how the CV and the AV work together to generate a more efficient and more convenient on-demand transit service. Vehicles are not only self-navigating and making real-time decisions, but also communicating with the traffic management system to make sure the routes and the schedules, they are always the efficient solution to maximize the 
uh, service coverage and minimize the passenger's waiting time. Here are some autonomous and connected vehicles they have already produced and they are undergoing the real world test. The most popular concept generated from the CV and AV technology is the autonomous modular vehicles. It means the vehicles can achieve the uh, assemble and the disassemble on the go. These vehicles can separate or combine together on the road uh, based on the demand of the passengers, and they don't need to help like the stationary infrastructure. For example, a vehicle can be divided into the smaller units for serving the different destinations. And also they can join together from the different origins to merge into a larger and the unified module that travels on the same route. So this ability is quite helpful to, for our on-demand transit. And the passengers who own the modular vehicles, they can move between modules uh, while in transit, which can improve the convenience of their travel experience. To evaluate the impact of this new kind of vehicles in our on-demand transit surveys, we conducted a comprehensive simulation to compare these vehicles with the human driving vehicles. So our goal is to investigate uh, the impact of these vehicles on the operational efficiency and environmental sustainability. In the simulation, we use the three types of human driving vehicles to generate the baseline for comparison. So from the result, we can find there have a significant improvement for the all operational and environmental metrics with the introduction of autonomous modular vehicles. Uh, the indicators like the operating cost, travel time, travel distance, vehicle usage, and energy consumption all show the decrease when we use the new vehicles. But even though our simulation show that the benefits of autonomous modular vehicles and show that it's a promising way for the more efficient and sustainable future for the public transportation, the application of these vehicles still face the challenges. The first challenge is about the cybersecurity. As the system, they heavily rely on the digital technology, so we need to reach the users or the passengers, their attention to the cybersecurity risk and the safeguard. Ensuring secure communication between vehicles and other infrastructure is quite important to protect against the cyber attack. The second uh, issue is about the uh, public trust. We need to build the public trust by proof that using these vehicles is safe by sharing our street with pedestrians and the human driving vehicles. We also need to prove that by using these vehicles, we can avoid the accident and also keep the passengers safe. But for now, it's quite challenging to do this validation and it's quite difficult to prove that it's safe for the in vehicle passengers and also safe for the pedestrian. So we still have a long way to go to tackle this issue. And the third one is about the performance. In our system, these technologies, they need to work all the time, no matter what. So the consistent performance is quite important in a range of conditions, like the raining days, snowing days, uh, busy streets, or quiet neighborhoods. These technologies, they must be always reliable. And the next is about the defense. The new technologies means they will have the new kinds of cyber attacks. So we need to be always one step ahead and working on the stronger defenses to keep our system secure. The next is the data privacy issue. Uh, the data collected between the vehicles and shared between the vehicles and the infrastructures, we need to make sure we can keep the personal information safe because it's a big deal. And the last one is the legal stuff. The regulations for the self-driving and connected vehicles are quite complex and always changing. So staying on the right side of these regulations is very important to make sure we can keep things running smoothly. 
Uh, so based on these challenges, uh, our research group also conducted a simulation to exploit the impact of the cyber attack on the on-demand transit surveys. In this simulation, we want to investigate how the cyber attack can disrupt the operation and their operational and environmental consequence. In the scenario, if the one vehicle is attacked, then this vehicle will be treated as a deceitful vehicle. And it will ignore the correct instruction from the uh, traffic management center or traffic management system to pick up or deliver the passengers. Otherwise, it will drive to the locations without any real passengers. So in this case, it will uh, lead to the unserved or unsatisfied passengers and also lead to additional cost related to the operation. To quantify the impact, we generate two scenarios with attack and compare the outcome with the baseline scenario where there are no attack happens. So according to the result, we can find that the operational and environmental metrics, they all change a lot. Specifically, the indicators like the operating cost, travel distance, travel time, vehicle usage, and the overall energy consumption, they all increase when the attack happens. So from the simulation, uh, we can see that it not only compromises the service efficiency, but also its sustainability. And it highlights the need for the mitigation strategies. So why is it so important? We need the mitigation strategies to protect our on-demand transit surveys against the cyber attack. It's not only about to keep our technology safe, but it's also about to make sure our service is reliable and make passengers feel confident when they use the surveys. If we can get the cybersecurity right, we are looking at the huge benefits in cities and environment. Imagine the less traffic congestion and less emission on the road. And if the passengers they find the system is reliable and safe, they are more likely to use it. So it means we can attract more people to shift from other travel modes, like from private cars to the on-demand transit surveys. So how to generate these mitigation strategies? The first is the tech side. We need to be smart. We need to use the new technologies to identify the cyber attack and stop them in their tracks. Besides, we also need to have diverse systems that they can support each other in case one part or one system is attacked. But it's not all about the techniques. We also need people on board. It means we need to train the uh, operators who run the system and also educate the passengers uh, on the importance of the cybersecurity. Besides, we can't work it ourselves. We need to share the information with others, with other cities, other companies, other experts to make us all stronger. And lastly, we need the regulation or the rules to support us. The street rules will make it tough for the hackers to succeed and to protect our privacy. So at last, let's take a, a moment to visualize how the autonomous on-demand transit service will transform the way we travel in our cities. And it shows how the vehicles react to the demand in real time. The service will be more efficient, more sustainable, and it's a shift to the more flexible, eco-friendly, and convenient urban um, transportation in the future. Thanks for your attention. Ronga, thank you so much for this insightful talk. That was so interesting. I really hope all, everyone here enjoyed it. I know as a person who relies on public transport, I'm very much looking forward to that bright, innovative future where we can all have better transport and obviously lack of overcrowded buses and simply get to where we want to go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, we rely on you. Yeah. We rely on you. Um, so, 
would you like to tell us more about um, what inspired you to pursue a career in computer science with link to transportation and transit services? Was there a deciding point in the past that inspired you to pursue that career? Well, for me, uh, my interest in the transportation was sparked when I first realized how the innovative technology can change the way we travel in our cities. I think it was about 12 years ago or 11 years ago when I was a freshman. When I first learned about the intelligent transportation system, that is ITS. When I discovered that the ITS can totally change the traditional traffic planning especially the public transport planning and management. I was attracted and really want to dive into this research field uh, because it provides the potential that we can use the technology to make our urban travel more accessible, more safer and more flexible, yeah. Fantastic, oh, that's amazing. And is there a particular project in your career so far that has made a big impact for you that was very satisfying and fulfilling? Well, I have to say there's a few projects that is quite rewarding and interesting. Okay, and would you like to share more about them? Yeah, oh, back to today's topic, mm -hmm. uh, the project about the uh, autonomous modular vehicle in the on-demand transit service is one of them. Because before this project, I was working on the human driving vehicles mm -hmm. and look for the routing and the scheduling strategies under that condition. But this project bring me the full flexibility in routing and the scheduling, especially it can achieve the dynamic capacity adjustment during the operation. That is quite helpful to improve the uh, passenger's travel experience and improve the system efficiency. And it's paved the way for my future research. That is quite helpful and impactful for me. And another project that we are project our research group working on is the artificial, you know, the artificial intelligence on the traffic control. It's another interesting topic. Yes, very yeah. much. AI yeah. is, is all the rage at the moment in terms yeah. of discussions. Yeah. So you are working on incorporating that in transportation service? Uh, yes. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, we are looking forward to that. And um, obviously you are a researcher, you're an active researcher. Um, would you like to tell us what, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Why do you enjoy coming to work every day? Why is, what, what's satisfying about your day-to-day -day job? Wow, uh, I think the, the most enjoyable part of my job is that it's for the opportunity that I can be creative and solve the complex problem that have a direct impact of, on our lives like the public transport, because it's so close to everyone's lives. And for me, I'm working on the academic research. So my main job is to develop the methodology or the solutions to the practical problem or the future problem in the public transportation. So seeing a concept generated from the mathematic model to a fully functional system that could potentially be used in the real world that is quite fulfilling for me in my daily work, yeah. It's amazing, it's just so fascinating for me to hear that obviously the reason why researchers do what they do, what you do, is really to benefit us, to benefit all of us outside of academia and just to know that you can better life for us. And obviously for the audience that we have here, for all the, student, for all the students thinking about their future careers, if obviously they are interested in computer science or in joining a team of technologists or just transport systems altogether. Is there anything that you would like to advise them? Okay, from my personal experience, um, I think because I was really interested in the transportation, so I just uh, look for the help for someone who already works in this research field can give me some advice. The, the advice they give me is that they said that the transportation for example, the transportation is related to the other research fields like computer science, civil engineering, uh, environmental science, and urban planning. So we need to pay attention on this diversity and understand their interconnection. So that is quite helpful to enrich our understanding for the practical problem and also deliver the solution that is not only in the technically advanced, but also the socially or environmentally responsible. Fantastic. Okay, well, I would like to open 
the questions to the public. Does anyone have any questions for Ranga? So basically, how are the apps going to help or support people who don't, like the older generation who don't use smartphones, who don't know how to use the apps or don't have access to these apps? How, how is the research going to? Yeah, like I introduced uh, in the topic, in the today's uh, topic, that the, the service, the current service in the UK, they also can have the opportunity, you can book it by phone, so not only in the app. I think they consider the old generation. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people will be able to use their home lines and dial the number and simply yeah. request, request the service. Fantastic. So pretty much the same as um, what we would do for an Uber, for example. Uh, yeah. Okay, lovely. So what challenges do you need to overcome in your, in your job? Well, like... Different examples. Yeah, just take an example of this work, this project that we have the concept of the autonomous model vehicle. We want to use it in the uh, on-demand transit service. But how to routine, the, how to make, make the rules and make the decisions for rules and the schedules for these vehicles is quite challenging for us. Because these vehicles, they, they don't have the human drivers. So how to design the rules, make sure it can pick up the, each passenger's on time and also they can arrive their des destination without delay is a challenge for us. So for facing the challenge, the first step for us to generate a mathematical model, describe this problem, and then to use some solution approach like the algorithm to solve it with the real data, the real demand to solve it, to see why the other solution and our rules and schedules can satisfy this demand. So that is the, the process how we deal with this challenge. Okay, do we have any further questions? Yes. So obviously for the students that we have in the audience who are looking at their year t t uh, 11, 10 and 11, what GCACs would they have to pick and what fruit, what subjects would they have to pick to actually follow then into your career path? Well, actually I have to say when I think about start or pursue this career when I was a freshman. So actually at that time I just, start to learn about the transportation, like the subject, like the tra uh, traffic engineering and traffic planning and management. So at that time, I just know about what is transportation, what can I solve, and what can I do in the future. So I think if they are still 11 or 12 years old, that's still far, far from, him, from them to know or learn about the specific area. Yes. Yeah. On anything in particular that you can advise them if they just want to follow um, computer science, for example, not go into the very niche of transport service, but simply into the broader area of computer science. Would you, what subjects would you suggest are the most useful for them? Uh, you mean during? During their current studies, mm. right before they apply for their bachelor's degree. Well, they, I think online they ha already have some online courses that teach you how to, how to know about the trend, computer science and how to use the, uh, some software to solve the problem. I think first step to find the interest in one problem and see whether, if you are interested in computer science, and see whether the computer science will help you to solve this problem. So if you have a problem, you need to find a solution and see how to solve this solution. Then you can learn more about that. Because you have problem, then you have the path to find a solution. So that would be more helpful if you want, if you're really interested in one subject or one research field. Okay, fantastic. And I uh, would imagine that obviously it would be very useful for all the students here to know that they should also rely on mathematics, physics, probably um, computer science studies and simply into the STEM, science, into the STEM uh, program altogether before they apply for um, obviously for computer science or technology altogether. Yeah. Um, do we have any further questions? Oh, is, the, is this way of transport sustainable? Uh, yes, of course. Like, uh, like we show in the simulation, we also test the impact of uh, this new uh, transit surveys on the sustainable, because we have the data for the energy consumption. And also we test the emission that the service will cause and compare with the traditional human driven vehicles and with the other travel mode. And the data and the simulation that show that it's quite helpful for the sustainability. 
fantastic. So we'll have less emissions, we'll have less traffic, we'll have less air pollution, less waiting time and less overcrowded buses. So it sounds like a very sustainable future that we are looking at. Yeah, but I have to say we still have a long way to go because application of this new technology still need to prove that they're safe. Okay. Yeah. So this is still an ongoing research that obviously yourself and your colleagues are working on. Yes, it's ongoing research and we will continue working on uh, use these technologies on the electric vehicles to see whether this combination can solve the more uh, sustainable um, problem and can reduce more emissions in the future. Fantastic. Lovely. Okay, so basically from the live stream, people would like to know how are these type of services going to seamlessly integrate with the current transportation services that we have? Yeah, like intro introduced uh, before that the current on-demand transit in the UK, the most of them service for the rural area and they are not connected with the uh, public transportation system like the conventional buses or the trains. So it would be better that we have the new service, a new system that connect, connected them together to make sure the passengers, they can uh, change between the travel modes with less waiting time or less working distance. So it means that the on-demand service, they should be uh, think about how to deploy the stations and how to design the route to make sure uh, the stations are quite close to the train station or the stations of a conventional bus and make sure the pickup time can match the, with the timetable of the conventional bus or the train's uh, timetable to improve the passenger's mobility. Okay, lovely, thank you. Any further questions from the live stream? So obviously you spoke about vehicles that will be either small or larger and they will assemble or disassemble. Will that, have, will that have to compromise? Will people have to compromise on space? Would they be comfortable for wheelchair passengers or for example, off-peak and on-peak? Will there be difference in the spaces provided for people? Well, actually the one feature, one important feature for the on-demand service is that the one people have one seat. So it's not a very crowded uh, environment. So there are no people standing on the vehicle. We need to make sure that. So we need to dispatch the wake according to the demands and make sure everyone has their seat. Okay, fantastic. And they will, of course, I assume, have designated areas for wheelchairs and, for example, people with pushchairs? Yes, I, I think that that be accessible in the future. It depends on whether we can achieve the uh, new vehicles. Yeah. Okay, mm. fantastic. Okay, any further questions? No? Anyone in the audience? Okay, fantastic. Lovely. Well, I think this was a great discussion. Once again, thank you so much. This was a very, very insightful talk. I personally enjoyed it very much. I really hope all the students here were inspired by what you have to say. And I really hope that you're all looking forward to this bright future where you use better buses if you are using currently buses. Um, Ranga, thank you so much for the talk and thank you so much for attending.